G'day everyone. I uh, thought I'd just pop in and have a quick chat with you about how I went yesterday with my uh, Tamron lens shooting down ACDC lane. Um, so we'll have a chat about that. I'm just going to give it a few minutes. So pop in on the chat too if you are there just to say hi. I'm just going to pull the chat over um, just so that we can see you here. So make sure you do say hi. I'm having a cup of tea with you guys this morning, believe it or not, no uh, beer o'clock this morning. I'm actually gonna have a, uh, a good cuppa with you, so uh, cheers on the cuppa side of things. Uh, so the stack's now starting to pop on board. So this wasn't planned, I just thought I'm gonna have a video out, um, probably I'll try and finish it today of the whole video so you'll actually see it. Uh, so that's basically what I'm gonna be doing today. Um, getting that ready for you and then I'll share that later on today or early tomorrow morning depends how long it takes me to get it on but I thought I'd come on and give you a sneak peek of the images and sort of give you a brief overview of how it went with uh, yesterday um, g'day Dan uh, g'day Vic good to see you in here Mario's here as well Kevin's here as well <clears throat> like I said I'm not sure how many will pop on because this one I only just decided to do this a few minutes ago Rod is also here so g'day Rod I just want to give it a couple of minutes and then we'll start guys, so I'm having a cup of tea, so English. <laughs> um, so the lens itself, I'll show you with the AC, g'day RM Pro Photomaster, how are you mate? So this is the lens itself um, on the camera, uh, you can see basically if you zoom the, the barrel does come out a little bit, not much though. Um, Basically, uh, it feels really nice though. Like the lens itself actually feels really good in your hand to use. Uh, it is a bit odd that they've changed the orientation around. Usually the zoom ring's at the back, and I did a couple of times choose the wrong one, but once you get used to that, that won't be an issue. Um, but yeah, it feels lovely in the hand, and it's lovely in light. So that's one of the great benefits um, of using this. It is really nice and light to hold in your hand. Feels well made, so that, that's a great thing as well. So it does feel really good in your hand. Um, even though I, I don't know if it's, it's, I'm not sure how the, the material it's made with, but it, at least it doesn't feel sort of that plasticky like the kit lens does, so it, it feels quite nice. Um, so yeah, I was really happy with uh, how it all went. I'm just switching back to the chat for a minute. Um, so RM Photomaster was just saying hello from Alabama. Trevor's here as well. I'm here early enough for the wall photos. <laughs> I didn't take any, well, there's wall photos as part of the shots, Trev, that's funny. Um, DS Iman said, good evening, good evening to you. Jay said, any focus issues? No, nope, none. Um, it was, yeah, well, it does have a, it does have a, a, a more of a plasticky feel compared to the GM lenses. Yes, it does, but it doesn't feel like it's cheaply made. So that's one plus with it. Uh, it does feel like it's, it's, it's a well-made piece of glass. But to be honest, I prefer that because it keeps it light. So that for me is not an issue. Um, and I don't really mind that at all as long as the lens works well. Uh, I don't really care how they make them, to be totally honest, as long as it gives me a good image out of the camera, uh, which I'll talk to you shortly about. Um, no, there was no fo fo photo uh, focus issues at all, Jay. It, it was great for the whole evening. I didn't do video with it, though. I only did um, stills, but... I used it for a number of hours. It was probably four hours last night and shooting continuously and it had no issues at all. It was stellar actually. It worked fantastic. So, you know, I just wanted to talk to you all about that aspect of it. Scott said, have you seen Jason Long's video? He was talking about focus issues. Yeah, I did see that, Scott, but he's talking about it in video. Now, I'll explain a couple of things to you here. I just want to move this so it's... Perfectly in the middle. Um, a couple of things about that that don't worry me at all. I haven't tried this for video yet. I might try it later on. But th this is not a lens that I'm going to be using for video. Um, to be honest, if I'm doing video, I'm, I'm using my 55 now all the time. And if I need something longer than that, I probably will get a, a nice prime. But I've used the 10 to 18 as my uh, video uh, lens. The thing for me with this is, I, you know, as you know, I'm a prime shooter. Apart from now, I've tried this lens and I really liked it. And I'll show you some images shortly. But um, I 
if I'm doing video, I'm not gonna be using that lens. I'm gonna be using the normal lenses that I use. When I shot the video that you're going to see, it was shot with 35 mil. And I also shot some with the 55 mil as well. They, they were the Sony uh, lenses. I'm still gonna shoot the same way that I shoot with, with stills because I love that look that those lenses give me. So there may be an issue with uh, this lens in video focus, but I can tell you there was no issues at all for me with, with the way that I shoot. And I can only talk to you about the way that I shoot and I'll only ever review something the way that I shoot because for me, I, and I mentioned this before about shooting brick walls, I don't give a hoot about how this looks on a brick wall. All I care about with this lens is how it looks with the type of shooting that I do, which is shooting models and weddings and things like that. And for, for photography particularly, this lens was outstanding. And, and that's really all that I'm worried about because I'm not gonna be using this for video. So yes, there's obviously an issue there because I think that one camera guy and Jason also admitted that there was an issue with it on the, um, uh, with that lens. That was in video, and I think he had issues with, with the uh, stills as well. But they were shooting different things than what I'm shooting. So to be honest with you, I don't go looking for problems with these lenses. And, uh, and I, the thing is too that, and this is the way that I will always work with you guys, I'm only ever going to review something the way that I use it. I'm not going to review something the way that I don't use it because it's, it's just not the way that I work. So I'm not gonna look for faults that may be there. So if that's what you want me to try and do for you guys, I'm not gonna do it because for me, basically, all I'm gonna show you is how I'd use this lens. And, and for me, to be honest, it, it was outstanding. And that's really all that I care about. Um, I think with anything, you can make it break if you, if you want to. And then if you start to look for things, well, then you can have problems with it. But I'm not gonna be shooting this lens the way that Jason did. Uh, I'm not going to be shooting the lens the way that the one camera guy did when he was shooting those things up close and all that stuff because to be honest with you this this will be a lens that I may actually get because I thought it might be a great travel lens but it, it's not going to be something that is is going to re replace my lenses that I'll be using in weddings which is still shooting primes but having said that it was great now I'm going to come back to um, the chat so I will come back to this but I'm going to take you through the photos now uh, so these are, these are straight out of camera basically guys. So these images are what I grabbed last night and I thought I'd show you JPEGs. Um, so they're JPEGs that were taken straight out of camera. I used continuous focus. Now this video will be up so you will see the video of this very soon. Um, and you'll see how I did the whole thing and you'll see a number of shots uh, that I actually did. But I just wanted to take you through uh, how it all worked. And, and the focus I had on continuous focus all night it was all wide area all night, and I used face detect uh, for the whole night. And it was really a great lens, very sharp, um, great to use. Um, it was lovely, never let me down at all. The, fake, the focus was terrific, actually. It was, it was really good. I shot it low light later on, and you'll see that later on in the video. Uh, but I just wanted to sort of take you through some of these images that you can have a look at, and then we'll have a... Um, We'll have a, uh, I'll come back and ask, answer some of your questions. But basically, you know, like I said, the, the distortion's a little bit there on the edges if you go completely wide. This was shot at 54 mil. I did shoot some at 24, I think. The, the original shot back here was ambient, so that's, that's taken for ambient. Um, and then I've added flash into the actual unit where, where Kerry was standing to the right. No, I think, yeah, to the right-hand side, I think. or the, No, the left-hand side. Kerry stood on the left-hand side of... of um, Rebecca and uh, lit her up. You can see the shadow on the, the uh, on her face there on on the right hand side, um, and you know, like I said, the color is gorgeous on this this lens. It, it's it's very sharp, and I mean, it really is sharp for the money that they're asking for this lens. It really is uh, quite beautiful. And again, like I said, I'm only ever going to review something the way that I will use it. Uh, I'm not going to go looking for errors on walls and and things like that. It's just not the way that I'm going to be working. Um, but I thought that I would show you, you know, basically how this looks straight out of camera using this lens. And it really is, uh, it really is, you know, quite stellar and it's very sharp. Like I said, these are JPEGs, guys, straight out of camera. No sharpening done, nothing. Um, you can see the skin texture there. The color's beautiful, very vibrant color. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the performance, actually, of it. This was shot at 2.8. I wanted to shoot most of the night at 2.8. As you know, if you follow me, that I like to shoot everything wide open. 
uh, as much as possible. So I wanted to see how the rendering is, and it's quite nice. The rendering actually is quite nice. The separation she's getting from her hair against that background uh, is really quite pretty. So, you know, I'm really uh, enjoying using uh, the lens, actually. I quite liked it. Uh, and I tried to go right through the whole focal length. So, you know, some of these are 62. That one back here was uh, 54. Um, I think I shot some later at 20 mil. Um, but, like I said, I can't fault it. For me, for the way that I use the lens, I, I really could not fault the lens. It was perfect. Um, another one here, it's just beautiful, you know. I mean, the colour, look at the colour that this lens is getting straight. And that's the camera as well. But this camera and lens combination is really nice if you want to shoot straight out of camera. And I thought I'd show you the JPEGs just to see what you thought of how they were looking straight out of camera because I haven't even had time to correct anything yet uh, on these uh, on, on this image at all but it, it's really sharp uh, and like I said the RAWs will take it to another level once I go and, and start to edit the RAWs but I think in the um, I think in the video I'll probably just put the JPEGs in uh, until I edit some images at the end but you know it's just, just beautiful I'm really happy with how the lens uh, worked and like I said I used it extensively through the whole night um, and it really didn't let me down at all. Some of these pictures are going to be beautiful once they're edited and retouched. Um, again, here, this is ACDC Lane. This, this lane is fantastic. Now, by the way, before I come back and show you some more, this is where we're going to shoot in Melbourne, guys. So if you're going to meet me for the um, shoot with Kiara on Sunday the 10th, because the date's now changed, we are now doing it Sunday the uh, 10th of um, June. We're going to shoot in ACDC Lane. So, uh, we're all going to meet there at 3 o'clock, and I'll put up another announcement later, but I'll, I'll say that now so it's, it's now on record. Um, we're going to meet at 3 o'clock at ACDC Lane, and we're going to move through this whole lane and shoot in these same locations with Kiara. So if you'd like to meet me on that day, uh, just let me know you're coming, and um, we'll meet you anyway on the day. So that's where we're going to meet is ACDC Lane. Uh, for people in the US and other areas, when we travel next year, we'll do something similar with you guys. Um, so again, um, this is just that lane that I just wanted to try some different things and poses and stuff. Like it's really grungy and I love the way Rebecca had these outfits. She fitted perfectly for this shoot that I did yesterday. It was She was really amazing. Um, and I love the look that she had. It just fitted it perfectly. Uh, and again, you know, you can see that it's it never really let me down the whole day. Like it was just... Um, I'll just go back to there for a second. It was just beautiful. Uh, the rendering is lovely. I'm really happy with the rendering. Like I said, straight out of camera, it's it's really good. Um, and I can't, like I said, I, I really can't fault it. And these are just, like I said, these are straight out of camera, guys. So there's no editing at all done here. So it, it will give you an idea about the type of lighting. This was lit by an ice light. Uh, Kerry was standing to the left of the camera here, just lighting up Rebecca with an ice light there, just to give a little bit of fill. Um, but... You know, like I said, I really can't fault the way that this looks. Uh, and the last one there is just where we did it in front of a um, Gucci store, I think. I thought I'd try it uh, there as well. Um, but, yeah, so I just wanted to sort of take you through that. But let's open it up to any questions you have, because I'm just curious to know what you guys have to say. But overall, guys, honestly, if you're dealing with photography particularly, and you shoot like the way I shoot, and I can only talk to you about the way that I shoot, because I'm not going to do what Jason did and what that one camera guy did. You know that for me is not the way that I work. I'm only ever going to review something the way that it works for me. So I'm not going to deliberately try and look now that I've seen that being a problem to see if that is a problem. Because it's not what I'll be using this lens for. If, if I use this lens, I will be using it for the type of shooting that I've just done. So that, that sort of may uh, explain the way that uh, I'm coming about things but um, so yes I did see Jason's Vong and clearly there is an issue that a couple of people have reported for video um, I may try that later on in the week and just see if it does it for me but uh, and I'll let you know if it does like I said I've always been honest with you guys um, Kelly said um, just about ready to take a break after having some continuous autofocus issues was that from this lens Kelly or I take it back after having some continuous autofocus issues. Now, is that in stills, Kelly, or is it in um, video? Because, like I said, for me, um, it was amazing. So, yeah, um, what 
Jay said, okay, makes sense. It's it's coming up with the video and not photos. Jay said, okay, yep. Yeah. Um, that room, that one camera guy was having issues with photo. Yeah, but he was like I said, he was shooting different things than what I will be shooting. And I and I yeah, I think he was trying to shoot a light or something, wasn't he? That was in the background. Um, I'm not saying those guys aren't telling the truth. They obviously are. You saw it when you were looking at the. Uh, the image, I can only tell you about the way that I've shot it at the moment, I particularly, uh, it, it's been fantastic. Um, Rui said, hello, Bayo said, Danny, that one camera guy said he was having focus issues taking photos, yeah, I saw that. Michael said, hello everyone and good day David, my go-to guy, <laughs> thanks Michael. Scott said, yes, 55 and 85 are on order and I'm happy with the 18 to 105. Mick said, have you tried the lens as a macro? No, I haven't yet. Um, seen a video where you can get pretty close up. Yes, I think you can uh, get pretty close up. Uh, I think the minimum focus and distance is very close, actually. I might just try that sometime. Um, Nibi888 said, Greetings. Seeing any of the same autofocus issues as others, I want this lens uh, to be a viable alternative to the three times extensive and heavier 2470. Yeah, well, like I said, I can only talk to you about my uh, findings and I haven't had an issue. Uh, it's all I can say to you with it. Uh, it was great yesterday, and I used it for, like I said, around four hours of shooting continuously, and it never let me down at all. But um, I said, um, when you're going to review Tamron with Sony 2470, well, I, I don't know if I will because I haven't got that lens, so I don't know if I will uh, separate them. The, the thing is, too, uh, Vinoth, I'm not sure that I even would want to uh, compare them that much, really, in the end of the day, because to be honest, you either love that look or you don't love that look. And when you think about that this is $7.99 compared to the GM version of that lens, which is, what, three times dearer, um, it almost is a no-brainer if you wanted to use it for photography, and then you could buy some prime lenses as well. But that, that's the way that I shoot. I'm not really interested in lugging around heavier 2470s GMs and also like the 70 to 200 GMs because they're just too heavy for what I want to use. Um, but if you were doing video, then clearly you may have to make a decision because if you were dealing with what uh, Jason was having issues with and you wanted to buy that lens for video and then it's not working fully, uh, you then have to think about was it right for you. But I can tell you from a photography perspective with the way that I shoot, it didn't miss a beat. Um... Trevor said, so what really separates this lens from the highly regarded SP series? I'm not sure, Trevor. Um, colours look great. Yeah, they did. The colours look fantastic out of, the, out of the lens and the camera. They did. They look really good. And I'm really happy with them. Like I said, they're straight out of camera, guys. So there's no editing at all that I showed you uh, in, those, um, in those images. So when you're looking at the the actual images themselves, you know, the, the colours are beautiful. Like, they really are gorgeous coming out out of that lens. Um, and like I said, the sharpness as well. You know, like when you're dealing with sharpness on these lenses, I don't know how this will be. Um, that's a fair way, but if you're dealing with some of the, you know, the close-up ones, it really is nice and sharp. Like I said, once I use the... Um, once I use the uh, raw photos on these images, um, they'll come up, you know, a million dollars compared to what I'm getting out of out of this one. But you know, it is. It's it's really quite sharp. Um, lovely rendering. I mean, I'm really happy with how it renders. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I'm really happy with it. Um, I was really happy actually. Um, what else? Mick said, I am rostered on every second weekend and now I can't make it on the 10th in DC land. Yeah, maybe next time, Mick. Um, Gene Lewis said, maybe Danny got the lens to overheat and lose focus. <laughs> oh, I love it. Stacy said, I have the Tamron on order. Thought I would have it by now. I'm going to try it and get it or the Sony 2470. And then, then you can make a decision. This is definitely better than the 2470 F4 though, Stacy. I can tell you that much. I, I've got that lens and it was definitely better. Um, Jean said, hopefully Tamron releases a firmware update if there is a focusing issue. Um, Dominic said, can't decide how good it is until I see your brick wall <laughs> shot. Um, Stacy said, I really think I'll keep the 28 to 75 Tamron. Jess said, um, with the Tamron, would you rather choose this instead of some prime lenses? No. I'd still use prime lenses, Jess. I love shooting 1.8 and 1.4. 
Um, but it could be a great lens if you want to just uh, travel and, and carry one lens that will do all of the type of shooting that I do. So yes, it could be. Um, but yeah, um, I'll, I mean, I might try and do a more full review uh, if I can that shows other things like doing a bit of the macro work and stuff like that because that, that could be something that we could look at. Uh, but I can certainly say for what I did yesterday, it was stellar. Um... <laughs> I owned a brand that's a nice charcoal shirt. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you. Um, Trevor said, uh, this, the 2470 F4 is a lovely, is really a lovely lens. It gets dismissed a bit, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's nice to be able to shoot the 2.8 though with that lens, Trev. I did really enjoy shooting it at 2.8. How is the netting, uh, the netting? Well, I didn't notice it. Um, that, that's the thing, like, that. Yeah, look, I know Danny shot that thing of the concrete wall and he showed he showed that it venetted a little bit. It probably does, but I, I've just showed you the images that were there. Um, I can't really notice really any venetting. It depends how you're going to shoot for it and what you're going to look at. But if you shoot like I do and you're doing exactly what I did, I wouldn't worry about it. And, you know, like I said, um, if, if it had venetting, it would be easily correctable in Lightroom anyway. Um... Stacy said, thank you for the review and the information. No worries, Stacy. Michael said, I saw about four videos on the Tamron issues. Let my friend use mine over the weekend. Not sure what, uh, if any issues he had. I'm only really using it for stills and traveling for me. No big deal. Yeah, and that's the thing. You're still dealing with a lens that is, uh, what is it, a third of the price or something of the 2470. So people really should not be comparing that lens to the quality of, of the 70 of the 2470 G Master because they're, they're completely different leagues if you're dealing with it like that on cost alone. Um, so, you know, I think it's a little bit unfair, to be honest, to compare them to those two lenses. This lens will either meet your needs or it won't. You really have to make a judgment call about whether you'd like to spend three times the amount to get the G Master lens or you'd like to, say, get this and then you've got money left over that you could use for buying some primes or something like that. Uh, it really is a call that only you can make. But I've only, like I said, I can only show you as I use the lens and uh, you'll see it when I do the video, when I put the video up later. Um, but it was outstanding. I mean, it, there was, it was really good to use. And, and if I particularly was just coming into the market and that's you know what I had the money to, to buy a, a lens, uh, and I only could say afford a, a limited amount, well then this is a no-brainer to get this lens with say the Sony a7 III. Because there's, it, it's beautiful, that result you're getting from that lens at that focal length is, is just beautiful, you know, and, and you can get that for less than the 3000 US. So it's just interesting, but I, I often review things a lot differently than, than what a, lo a lot of other re reviewers review things, because like I said, I'm only going to tell you how I shoot it and how it works for me. Um, and I think really, for the price that lens is, it's a no-brainer. I'm not being paid to say this. Um, they lent me this lens for the week. Um, but I'd, I'd tell you the truth. If I didn't like it, I'd just tell you the truth. They haven't given me any money at all to promote this, uh, to say anything good or bad about this lens. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to tell it to you as it is. Uh, like I said to you, I'm a prime shooter, so would I buy it to use in my wedding and photography business? Maybe, but uh, I'm still going to be shooting my prime lenses, and th that's the thing for me. I love shooting that 1.8 and 1.4, but if this was all I could afford, it's stellar. It's outstanding, I think, for that price. Um, what else? Um, Scott said, congrats on the A7 III review. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, Scott. Yeah, I'm really happy with how that review came out. I wanted to keep it short, sort of concise and straight to the point, but I was very happy with how that uh, came out. I'm happy to get it uh, if the A6700 and A7S III doesn't cut the mustard. I only shoot video. Yep, I can understand that. Um, Jess said, how can Tamron make a new firmware update through the Sony camera? Uh, because there is really... A because is there really collaboration? Well, I'm not sure. They may, you may be able to update this lens through the camera. Um, I don't know how that will work yet. So that's going to be an interesting thing. 
uh, as well. Rad said, I called my pre-order after all, uh, I cancelled my pre-order after all the autofocus issues reported. And that's like I said, Rad, that's the issue or the thing that you've got to make, I suppose, is work out whether it will work for you uh, or not. Jay said, David versus Danny versus Jason. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm not saying that they showed you the proof of what was going on, but I, I think you have to put it in context, guys. I think you have to think about what you're paying for this lens as what you'd pay for a GM version. I, personally, and I'm being totally honest to you here, I would prefer to get this lens than the GM version and then buy another Prime. But, but that's the way that I shoot, and I'm only telling you about how I shot, and you saw my results. The results don't lie. Um, and you'll see it when I do the video. Like I said, I shot for a number of hours. Uh, I can only talk to you about it from my perspective as a, you know, as a full-time photographer. And I'm just going to basically say as it is. Um, David loves Danny and Jason makes that t-shirt. I love it. I do love those guys. Um, Manuel said, David, I'm late to the chat, but there's been a tons of reports that claim it has. Yeah, bad focusing issues. Yeah, I've seen that already. Ross said, um, will it render on the R3? Um, well, I think so. I, I've, I don't know, because I haven't got the R3, but I'm, I'm, I think it would. Yeah, I don't think it would be any issue at all. Manuel said, is this accurate or did you find your copy was fine? No, I found my copy was amazing. And like I said, if you, if you haven't seen what I just took you through, go back through the video later on once I post this, and then you'll be able to have a look at uh, how it actually performed. But... Um, like I said, it was stellar for me. It really was stellar. Uh, the face detect was insane. Uh, the continuous focus worked brilliantly. It worked great in low light, which I did later on, and you'll see that in the video as well. Um, so it's interesting how some are saying there's tons of reports. Um, so I can only say to you as I've used that one, uh, and that, that's all I can say to you at this stage is, uh, I can only sort of talk to you about how it worked for me. You may need to perhaps um, try one yourself and then see if it make, if it works for you. I suppose that could be one way that you could actually look at it and see if it actually works for you. Um, but I didn't have any of the issues of it not focusing or anything like that where you had to unmount the, uh, the, the lens and then put it back on like Jason and Danny was saying. I had none of that. I kept it on the camera and used it for the whole night without changing it, and it never had any issues at all. Uh, I didn't shoot video with it, though, um, and I certainly wasn't trying to shoot things like what Jason and Danny were doing, so I didn't have any of those issues there uh, at all. And you're right, Michael, the colours did look really nice. The colours on it look amazing. Like It's beautiful, and it's easily as nice when I'm looking at the rendering as what I'm getting out of my... Um, primes I think. Uh, the only thing is like I said I can't shoot any more open than that 2.8 um, look that I love so much you know and that that's that's the thing so but the rendering itself is 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 quite lovely the colors are quite beautiful straight out of camera uh, it's very sharp like I said it's extremely sharp if you're looking at it. like I said these are straight JPEGs there's no sharpening or anything being added apart from what they do add in in the JPEG um, but and these haven't been edited at all. These are, like I said, straight directly out of camera. I'll show you just on the right-hand side, you'll see. These are all straight out of camera. There's nothing been edited at all on these guys. I haven't touched these one bit. Um, so you're seeing them directly as they've uh, come straight out of camera, and I think the rendering's beautiful. So like I said, you've got to make a decision about whether you would um, be happy with that type of result, or whether, you know, you might say, well, I'm not happy about that it may not focus well enough for me but I, I can only tell you about how it it worked for me and it was outstanding and that that's all I can tell you um, whether there's variations with this lens um, I don't know uh, obviously the one that I've got is spot on because there was no issues at all but having said that there was no issues at all shooting with what I, how I was shooting so uh, that that's all I can say to you it, it, it did it work fantastic um, what else have we got? If you were, if I were to buy the 2875 2.8, do you know the approximate time of delivery? Now I think they're still on back order, so it may take a while to um, to get them. Uh, I was using the A7 III for this because I used. When you see the video, I used the uh, A9 to do the video. Um, but I might try. I've got a, a shoot plan with Kiara on Thursday, so I might try uh, a little bit of video with Kiara just to see how it goes in focusing and things like that. 
So I may try that on Thursday and see how that goes. Um, just to see some different things and you know, I'll see if I can shoot up a little bit closer and, and try that. Um, but like I said, that's why I saw that this morning uh, of Jason's and I also saw that one camera guy's video yesterday. And I thought, well, I can only, I, I must pop on and talk to you about how I found it myself personally because I've got that video to work on today and that w will be posted probably late today or early tomorrow, I'm not sure. Um, but I just wanted to get online and say to you that for the way I used it and what I did, it, it was outstanding. And particularly if it works like it does for me and that's how the lenses are and you're only doing photography like I do, it's a no-brainer. Uh, honestly, it is a nose-brainer to get that lens. There's no reason why you would have to buy the G Master if you're getting results like what I was just getting straight out of camera uh, and they look beautiful. And, and that's really all that matters for me, remember? Like I said, I'm not gonna go around and shoot brick walls. There's no way I'm gonna go out there and shoot brick walls and try and show for netting and everything else. I don't give a hoot about that sort of crap. All I care about is how the image looks on the screen and that's all I care about. Remember, I'm not a pixel peeper. I'm a full-time wedding and portrait photographer. For me, the image sells. And if I had to sell the images that I was just showing you, I would have no problem at all. And that's really all that worries me. So you've just got to basically make a judgment. Is that look good enough for you? Or you know, do you think you'd like to spend more and get the G Master? I know which way I'd be going, and that would be getting this with, uh, um, with a, a, another beautiful wide prime. Uh, but, like I said, that's the way I shoot. Now, other people that are getting reviews may find that it's not working as well for photography, and we're going to have to wait and see about that, I suppose. Um, like I said, I can only tell you about how it performed for me, guys. Um, what else have we got? Michael said, there could be a bad batch of lenses, and that's possible, Michael. There might be. Perhaps I've got a really good one. I, I don't know. There could be a batch, perhaps. George said, I'm going to pick up the 24105F4 over the Tamron uh, and stick to fast prime lens for my a7 III. Love the 85 1.8 with it. Thanks for keeping it real, David. No worries, George. Like I said, I can only tell you the truth and how I find it myself. I suppose that um, I'm in the unique position of not being sponsored by anyone at all. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's one plus side of things that... I'm just going to tell you the truth. <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose that's one plus side of everything. Um, what else have we got? Um, Jess said, I think after further consideration that the Tamron lens should be sent back to Tamron for a firmware update. Yeah, I'm not sure whether they'll be sent back or whether you're going to be able to update them in the camera, Jess. Uh, I'm not sure. It'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Chris said, hi, David. Uh, finally made it to a live chat. Good to see you in here, Chris. Uh, Manuel said, great images, colours pop. They do. Like I said, that I was amazed. And I, I couldn't believe how well they looked out of camera. I, when I last checked this, I only did it with video. And um, I was just doing the video focus that you saw when I had Kiara doing uh, that. So, And I couldn't take any still in images. So I was dying to check how the still images actually looked. And, and like I said, you know, they are. They're outstanding. I really am happy with how the, uh, the images... Uh, look straight out of camera and I was racking focus all I mean racking you know zooming all over the place um, you know and I was doing all different things uh, with the camera and like I said the face detect worked outstanding um, you know and it really did work beautiful look I've even shot the brick wall for you in case if you did want to have a, a brick wall shot <laughs> but you know like I said it, it they just the rendering is beautiful, and if, if that's all you care about and, and it worked for me with focus, it was an outstanding lens, and for the price, it's a no-brainer if they work like they do for me. And that's, like I said, I can only talk about how they work for me. Um, but the colours do. The colours are absolutely stunning. You know, when you're looking at, at these colours that you're getting straight out of this camera with the a7 III, I mean, seriously, it's just beautiful. I, I mean, th that camera... The a7 III, the, the rendering now on that camera is stunning. And the lens, I was surprised how well it actually rendered these images uh, in JPEG. Like I said, you can almost now shoot JPEG. Honestly, if you nail your exposure, and I have tried to nail my exposure here, but if you do nail your exposure, you can shoot uh, directly in camera and get gorgeous results. And really, there's almost no need to go into RAW. And, and, and this is a, an interesting thing that you know, is looking at this, that you could just shoot straight 
uh, JPEG, and I'd be happy to submit these almost as they are, to be honest. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, and I do, I agree with you, Manuel. The colours do look, they really do pop, and they came up really good. Um, Daniel said, uh, have the lens uh, shot all weekend, Landscape Street, uh, no issues at all for me. Yeah, and, and whether there's a bad batch, Daniel, I'm not sure, but it, it certainly was stellar for me. That's for sure. Chris said, uh, the lens is crazy good. Do not get uh, do not get confused by some YouTubers having some issues. And like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm outstanding with it. I, I, I really am so happy with how the results look. And I've showed you, like I said, I'm not showing you edited images at all. You're seeing raw images straight out of the camera. So I'm not hiding anything, and I showed you that when I moved the image over. Um, that Tamron will be an amazing lens. I agree, I think it would be. Jess said, I stick to my 24-105 f4 and 7300 uh, plus my four prime lenses. And like I said, Jess, and I fully support what you're saying. If you're happy with it, perfect. Scott said, real will use is what counts, David. A technician is one of the thing, is one thing and an artist is another. And like I've said to you too, I, I, I only see things from an artistic point of view. Um, if you want to see pictures of that brick walls and stuff, it's not me, and it's not the way that I ever review things. You're just going to see it when I review it as a real-world review. Um, Jess said, um, what else? George said, uh, do you see Tamron releasing a small, fa uh, fast, wide zoom next? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I would love them to perhaps bring out a 70 to 200 uh, 2.8 zoom. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do bring out, but if clearly if the lens is as good as what I've just seen here, um, it could be things that I could add into my arsenal later on. Um, but, you know, I really do think it's it, the results are outstanding for what I got. Gay okay, Ario, good to see you in here. Michael said, I'm keeping mine regardless, laugh out loud for its size, colour, sharpness, and I'm really still impressed with the AF uh, that I've been seeing as long as they can fix the issues that's happening. Well, perhaps you not may have those issues, Michael. Uh, your lens might be perfect like mine is, well, from what I've shot anyway so far. Um, Aria said, wow, what a great picture. Thanks, Aria. Yeah, I'm really happy with how the results came out. Go back and you'll be able to check a few because I've posted quite a few. You will see the video when I upload that later today or tomorrow. Um, Ray's saying, oh, hello, everyone. Hi, Ray. Good to see you in here. Jay said, don't uh, don't know, can't tether Capture with Sony on Lightroom, just bought Capture One. No, I don't think it can. I think you do need Capture One for that to work. I think that's the way that it that it actually goes. Um, so when you see the video anyway, when I do post that later on, I've shot a number of locations too. So you're going to see uh, the uh, ACDC lane and then obviously I'll go outside and shoot in a different location. And then later on in the evening, I go and do some low light work, um, which uh, you'll be able to see as well to see how it focuses in low light and things like that. Um, so there's a few things that I did on this test uh, I will do some more tests. Like I said, I've got Kiara booked in on Thursday, so I'm going to do some things with Kiara as well. Um, but like, like I said, the, the results particularly were outstanding. You know, I mean, they, they really were. And the rendering really is is really quite nice. And I mean, I really do think, like you know, I'm saying, these latest Sony cameras and you put a lens on like that and, and the gradations and everything are, are just beautiful that's coming straight off that lens. Um, you know, they really are gorgeous and like I said when you're dealing with these are just JPEGs you know it's it's just ridiculous really how good these are starting to get now when it's straight out of camera and you're dealing with getting these results now without any editing done at all now yes they can be taken from raw into Lightroom uh, into Photoshop and then edited and, and added more um, contrast probably and things and I probably will take a few of these for the girls and edit them and give them some high-end retouched ones but I could submit these directly as they are. I mean, honestly, I really could submit these almost as they are now. Like, the lighting's beautiful, like, and I'm really happy with how the lens actually looks. And, you know, and I really do think it, it's worked out fantastic, to be honest. Um, Dominic said, I agree with you, Sigma or Tamron uh, really need to get a 70 to 200 2.8 out ASAP. 
I had to sell a kidney to buy three of the Sony GMs. And that's the thing with you guys, like I say, you do not have to buy GM lenses to get amazing results. And I've just showed you that. I've just showed you that you can use a 799, whatever it is, US lens to get really nice results. I'm not saying my work's fantastic, but no, well, I mean, I am happy with my work. But um, I just showed you the results that you can get from this lens. And if you can't sell that type of work, with a, something like an A7 III and the Tamron, and what I just used, a 28 to 75, well then clearly your work's not good enough. You can't say that that gear is not good enough to give you work that you could sell, because I'm telling you, just looking at, well you saw it, that there's no problem, I could sell that no problem at all. Um, Ray said, uh, I can say I just used my A-mount lens with adapters, posted a group page on 2875 cell, and the photos are amazing. With Tamron's technology, it should be better using native mount. Um, just tuned in. Uh, was this with the A7 III? Yes, it was. It was shot with the A7 III. Uh, look great. Yeah, they did. They, like I said, I'm, I'm really happy with how they look. Um, ACDC Lane rocks. I would love to take some photos there. I know it's amazing. It's an unreal lane. Wait till you see the video. Uh, it's stunning. It really is great. There's all artworks of musicians down there. You've got uh, bon, Scott, bon Scott coming out of a wall and, you know, 3D. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, it, it really is great. Um, Scott said, don't think a ACDC lane go down well in Glasgow. <laughs> Aria said, hi, Michael. Dominic said, ACDC lane looks great. I'm in Montreal. I think uh, all we have is a Celine Dion alley. Not the same. Yeah, it's so grungy. I've not shot there before and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm going to do that Melbourne shoot down there as well, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. George Larkas said, really enjoying the image stability with all my legacy Minolta lenses uh, and Russian lenses on the a7 III. I know, that's fantastic, George. Like, to have that ability in that camera to hold, hand hold things is great. And I talked about that in my a7 III review that I just put up, and it really does make hand holding video an option. It's not it doesn't replace a gimbal, but you know you can get away with hand holding and get really nice results, and that really is is a great thing. Um, so let's summarise, and, and I'll, I'll basically summarise it too. I'll, I'll just ask you if video focus is an issue, uh, how Tamron fix it? Well, it may be a firmware update. I'm not sure, or it may be that there's some lenses that uh, are an issue, uh, Vinoff. I'm not sure. Perhaps there's different versions of the lens. I don't know. But in summary, like I said to you guys, I can only talk to you about how this worked for me yesterday. And I did give it a real test because like I said, I used it for four hours and I didn't stop shooting in all that time. Uh, face detect worked particularly good for me. Uh, eye detect was amazing. So all the features that you're used to in the Sony cameras work very well. Uh, you've seen the images that I took you through which look fantastic straight out of camera. I wasn't hiding anything. There's been no corrections done. Uh, you saw the images as they are, and really, uh, they're, they're amazing, and they're sharp, colours pop like crazy, the colours are beautiful, and that's a combination, obviously, of the camera and the lens. Uh, they're nice and sharp, gradations look fantastic. Uh, I didn't notice any vignetting uh, in what I was shooting, but, you know, and overall, I'm just so happy with it. S but stay tuned, because I will have the full, uh, vi this full video up, uh, and you'll be able to see me going through the whole shoot, uh, fairly soon. Um, so let me just ask, answer the last few questions before I go. And obviously leave some questions down below too if you want me to ask some questions, guys. Um, if video focus air, yeah, will they fix it? And I'm not sure how Tamron uh, will do the uh, firmware fixes on this. I don't know whether it will have to be sent back to Tamron, whether it can be done through the camera, um, or whether it, it needs to be put in a dock. We're going to have to wait and see about that, how that actually works. I'm hoping it's just a, a firmware through the camera, whether Sony will allow that though or not. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Ray said, are you going to coffee soon? Yes, I will be having a co coffee. I'll be having a coffee very soon, Ray. Um, did you see uh, the video you posted earlier of ACDC Lane? Oh, you saw that, yeah. And I know it is, it's a great lane. Wait till you see the video. Wait till you see the video I put up. Uh, because you're gonna see this actual shoot. So you'll actually see the shoot being done. Mario said, yes, ACDC Lane is a great place and it has brick walls. I'm laughing. <laughs> it does have brick walls. Michael said, it's funny how you can put a Tamron lens, Canon Sigma lens on Sony body and it look different than the Sony native lens looks. I know. 
Uh, Oreo said, would you say that the IQ of the Tamron lens can match? Uh, yeah, Oreo, I think it's pretty close, Oreo. Well, you saw the results there. Um, and really, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. If I didn't want to shoot 1.8 and 1.4 all the time, uh, I'd be very tempted to just have that on the camera. But I can see how wedding photographers and all that would love this if you like shooting with a 2470 uh, lens. Um, and to be honest, I prefer that that little bit of extra reach, the 75. That means more to me than having it at 24. I'd prefer to have 28 to 75 than 2470. So it probably fits more about what I would like to, to shoot with, because I do like to shoot more for the compression. And having that 75 length um, you know, is really good. And if you notice a lot of my images, and I'll, I'll see if I altered that when I did the, uh, when I do the video, but you'll even see a lot of my images rarely go down, and this is how you can prove, this is how you can prove to yourself what focal length you nearly always shoot with. Um, that if you're dealing with these, I mean, if that was, like I said, that was the ambient exposure, then when we add the flash, but you can see here that I've gone here and I've, I've used 55 mil. Uh, I'm using 54. 54, 69, 62, 62, I'm using 52, 52, 59, 59, 28, so I've used wide open there, so I am using wide open there, and I can't see any obvious vignetting when I'm looking at it, um, I'm using 67 here, um, 67 there, 63, uh, 43, 43, 42, 30, 51, 50. So very rarely am I ever going near that amount anyway. And this is the thing that I wanted to sort of talk to you guys about, that you can work out from your shooting what length you often use. I very rarely use that wide open length. If I did, well then I could go to something like the 16 to 35, or I could use a wide angle prime. And this is why I'm saying to you that this is such a good lens to have on your camera and then have a wider lens there. I very rarely shoot at that 28 mil because I don't like shooting at that length that often. It's not good for portraits. So for me, this is a great focal lens. So some others might say that 24 is an issue. It's definitely not an issue for me, but you'll have to work out how you shoot. And that's why I'm saying it's, a, it's an important thing for me. Would this replace my primes? No, it wouldn't for me because I like to shoot at 1.8. But if I did have a travel lens and I wanted to say go very light and I wanted to travel and do the shoot that you've just seen, I could quite easily just take that lens if I was traveling uh, abroad or something and I wanted to keep the luggage down really light, I could easily just take that lens on and shoot as you just saw and really I'd be quite happy with that. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to see what you can actually get from it. So I think the, the quality Oreo, yes, is pretty damn good. Um, what else? I just that must be for ups uh, for likes. Thank you, Hope Holics. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it if you could give me some likes too, guys. Uh, Vinoth said I am staying in Kuala Lumpur. Sony A7 III is one thousand eight hundred and fifty. Is that a good deal? I'm not sure about how that is for the money over there. Uh, sounds like it is though. George said thanks for the comprehensive Tamron twenty eight seventy five lens discussion, David. As always. Uh, roll that glorious footage. Thanks, George. Michael said, Oreo, yeah, I got it, but I will let my friend use it over the weekend, so I have no clue uh, of what the lens is like. That's fine. Wow, great photos. Oh, thank you so much. Jess said, anyway, good to hear your opinion about Tamron's first FE mount lens. Well, I think it's only just going to get better from here, guys. I really do. Uh, travel would be my use case for this lens. What uh, is the problem with this lens in video? Well, some people are saying Jason and Jason this morning posted a video, um, Jason Vong, that he had an issue with it in focusing. Uh, I think he said it was quite good for stills though, but he did even have an issue with stills. I haven't seen that problem yet. Um, Dominic said, uh, I personally use, usually like a little bit of an editing. I think uh, landscape photography is where it would be an issue. Uh, but still an easy fix in Lightroom, and it is. And that, that's where that's where some people a lot of the time whinge about things that are just a fix, uh, just a slider in Lightroom, or you can even fix it on import. So I don't worry about things like that. You know, I really don't. Well, there you go. You can see a fraction in the corner there if I look at it. Um, you can see just a touch up in the in the corner up there where it's just vignetting a little bit. So there's a very slight easy fix in Lightroom. Really easy fix in Lightroom, but you know, like I said, it doesn't even bother me. 
It doesn't worry me at all. Uh, I think, honestly, for the price that you're getting that lens, it's outstanding. And, and like I said, I, I showed you the results that I really do think the price that you're dealing with here, uh, it, it really is an outstanding, beautiful lens. It's giving you great quality, um, gorgeous colors straight out of camera, uh, gorgeous rendering, incredibly sharp, can't go wrong. So anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you think about that, guys, because um, I really am curious to see others that are using it, whether you're having it, uh, particularly people that have got this lens in uh, using it for photography. I'd love to know if, if you've had issues shooting like what I'm shooting, um, because I didn't see one issue yesterday at all. It never failed or never let me down. So, and that was in around four hours. So I'd love, love to know what you guys are saying that in the comments down below uh, as well. Um, Ray said, uh, I'm planning to get the 35 1.4 and I still adore that lens. I use that for the video. So you'll see that in the video with the A9 when you, when I release the video of this, uh, coming up. Um, and I've got uh, 14 2.8 from Sam Yam Rocky on yet. And I plan to get the 28, uh, to 75 just to add to the collection yet. And it really, like I said, is great. Gerald said, yes, Jason Vong and that one camera guy both had focus issues. Yep. And I saw that. Gene said, people worrying about vignetting, but adding vignetting on post anyway. I know that's an interesting thing, Gene. <laughs> I suppose one thing is if you don't want it on there, it could annoy you if it comes in. But like I said, it's such an easy fix uh, in Lightroom that you don't have to worry about it. It really is not an issue. Uh, Kelvin said, I used it last weekend for a studio shoot. Continuous AF and IAF work great. They did. And I found the face detection was outstanding. IAF was brilliant. Uh, on the lens. The only area where I had a little bit of uh, fun issue was, it's funny because I had, um, which was it, this one. Um, I was standing them in another spot and it kept grabbing, the, it thought that was a face in the background, which was quite funny. I was standing a long way though away and um, Rebecca's face was really quite small and it was funny, it was defaulting to that with the IAF. And I basically just then uh, moved it manually and then there was no issue at all. But it was interesting how it thought that face uh, was a real human face. And I thought that was funny. Uh, but like I said, the, the whole day it was outstanding. Face detection and, and the continuous focus. And to be honest, the way, it's changed the way that I shoot now with these latest Sony cameras. I very rarely ever put the cameras into um, your single uh, focus. I'm nearly always just using continuous there's no real need to, and I just keep it on continuous for the whole day. And like I said, the face detect was just amazing. The IAF was just brilliant uh, on this camera. It was really stunning, and I really enjoyed using it. Like I said, I've been using primes for so long, and it was quite it was quite pleasurable to just be able to zoom in uh, with the lens. Uh, and you know, I did enjoy that aspect of it. <clears throat> so last few before it's coffee time. Um, Rx said, I shoot 4K video primarily and use the Eloxia 50, baddest 25 and 85. I may still pick this lens up for travel stills though. Yeah, and it'd be a great lens for that, I think. Really great lens for that. Uh, Gerald said, uh, I will stick with my Sony 24105 F4 for now. Uh, got some great shots with it in St. Martin's in the Caribbean. Um, some posted on Facebook group. Yeah, I saw those. They were nice shots. Uh, Rx said, um, St. Martin, great place. Uh, how do you like the 24105 for video? Oh, he's talking to Gerald. Um, David said, good to see you, Tom Durant. Oh, he's just talking to there. Uh, thank you for the lives, David. Okay, guys, uh, any last questions before I go off? I'm going to finish because I think Jason's video is coming up and that one camera guy in a few minutes. I better get off before them or they'll probably tell me off. Um, so actually watch that because that will be up live soon. I think they usually start around about 12 o'clock. Um, Melbourne time, so that it'll be in around about half an hour or 15 minutes, I think they usually start to go on live. So they'll be going on live too, and you can talk to them about the issues that they're having, uh, because they are obviously having totally dis different if issues to what I've got. I mean, I'll probably pop in there on the chat anyway. Um, so that's all for now, guys. So um, if you can, I'd love you to give me a big thumbs up. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and make sure you click that bell button. I will have this video up, uh, like I said, possibly later today or early tomorrow. Uh, so I'll have that up fairly soon for you and you'll be able to watch this shoot right through and see how the images look and stuff like that. Um, so apart from that, 
It's uh, time for a coffee in my New York accent. Coffee time. All right, guys, have a great day. See ya.